Now that we have learned how to divide two polynomials, let us learn the remainder theorem. Now the remainder theorem states that if f of x is a polynomial of degree greater than or equal to 1. Now we know what a polynomial is. It is a collection of terms in some variable, right? So here the variable is x, right? So in the variable x, if f of x is a polynomial of degree greater than or equal to 1, and alpha is any real number, right? Alpha is some real number. Then if we divide the polynomial f of x by x minus alpha, right? The polynomial f of x, the same polynomial, when it is divided by x minus alpha, the remainder will be equal to f of alpha. Are you able to follow? So there is a polynomial f of x and there is a real number alpha. This polynomial, when we divide by x minus alpha, we know that we get some remainder and which can be verified using the uh, division method that we have seen uh, earlier. But the remainder theorem states that instead of doing the long division to find out the remainder, we can directly say that the remainder of that division is going to be f of alpha. Now what is meant by f of alpha? See f of x is the polynomial where x is the variable. In place of the variable x, we need to substitute the real number alpha. Right? So wherever we have x in the polynomial, just replace that with the number alpha. Whatever simplification we get, the number there is going to be the remainder. Let us understand this with the help of an example. Let us say there is a polynomial f of x. Uh, let f of x be equal to, uh, let's say 2x squared plus 5x minus 1. So this is a second degree polynomial, right? The degree should be greater than or equal to 1. So a second degree polynomial, 2x squared plus 5x minus 1. And you now let's consider some real number alpha. Let's say alpha is equal to 3 right alpha the real number alpha is equal to 3 now the theorem states that when this polynomial is divided by x minus 3 x minus alpha the remainder is going to be f of alpha so what happens you divide 2x squared plus 5x minus 1 divide this by x minus 3 x minus alpha what is the remainder the remainder is equal to what is the question what is the remainder the remainder will be f of alpha f of 3 so as you see here, we do not have to do the long division to find out what the remainder is. We can simply substitute 3 in place of f of x and get the remainder. So what is f of 3? f of 3 will be equal to 2x squared 2 into 3 squared plus 5x 5 into 3 minus 1. So simply substitute 3 in place of x. So let's simplify this 3 squared 9, 9 into 2 is 18. 18 plus 5, 3 is 15 minus 1. So 18 and 15, 33. 33 minus 1 will be equal to 32. So we can say the remainder of this division is going to be 32, right? f of 3 is equal to 32. So this is how we can find out the remainder when we divide, uh, you know, a polynomial with the other polynomial uh, without doing the actual division. Having learned about the remainder theorem, let us now look at the factor theorem. The statement says that if f of x is a polynomial of degree greater than or equal to 1 and alpha is any real number such that f of alpha is equal to 0, right? So like in the earlier case, f of x is a polynomial of degree greater than or equal to 1 and alpha is a real number. But the condition here is f of alpha is equal to 0. In such a case, x minus alpha will be a factor of the polynomial f of x, right? Then x minus alpha is a factor of the polynomial f of x. Conversely, we can also say that if x minus alpha is a factor of f of x, then f of alpha has to be 0, right? If x, x minus alpha is a factor of f of x, then f of alpha has to be 0. If you observe the latter part of the statement here, it says if x minus alpha is a factor of f of x, then f of alpha equal to 0. This corresponds to the remainder theorem. We very well know that as per the remainder theorem, if a polynomial f of x is divided by x minus alpha, then the remainder is f of alpha. Here, since x minus alpha is a factor of f of x, what do you mean by factor of f of x? It means it divides f of x completely. There is no remainder. Yes or no? x minus alpha is a factor of f of x which means it is completely dividing f of x or f of x is completely divisible by x minus alpha. When it is completely divisible, there won't be any remainder. That is the reason the remainder f of alpha will be equal to 0 since the remainder will be 0. Yes or no? For example, we say that 3 is a factor of 9. 
what does it mean 3 is a factor of 9 when 9 is divided by 3 the remainder is 0 here x minus alpha is a factor of f of x if x minus alpha is a factor of f of x there shouldn't be any remainder which means the remainder as per the remainder theorem is f of alpha it should be 0 as there is no remainder they should be equal to 0 so this is how the remainder theorem and the factor theorem are interlinked to each other all right so the statement here says let f of x be a polynomial and let alpha be a real number now if x minus alpha uh, or if f of alpha is 0 the direct statement here is f of alpha is 0 then x minus alpha will be a factor of f of x so if the remainder is 0 it means it is a factor or if it is a factor then the remainder has to be 0 this is what is meant by the factor theorem. let us understand this with the help of an example let's consider some polynomial for example let's say f of x is equal to uh, x squared minus 3x x squared minus 3x minus 4 right so here is the polynomial f of x a second degree polynomial x squared minus 3x minus 4 now uh, let's consider the value of alpha right but alpha should be such that f of alpha is 0 right when you substitute alpha in place of x it should be equal to 0 so what can be the root of that equation I am just trying to give you the value of alpha such that f of alpha is 0 right otherwise it will be directly given just to prove the theorem, I am taking, I am doing the actual calculation here. So if I look at the roots there, I think it should be 4, right? Let's say alpha equals to 4, right? Alpha is equal to 4. Now let's find out what is f of alpha. f of alpha is equal to f of 4, which must be equal to 4 squared minus 3 into 4 minus 4. How much is this? 16 minus 12 minus 4 is equal to 0. Now that f of 4 is equal to 0, we can say x minus alpha, x minus alpha or x minus 4 is a factor, is a factor of f of x. Right? So this is uh, the factor theorem. Or if it is given that x minus 4 is a factor of f of x, then f of 4 should be equal to 0. The remainder has to be 0. So this is the factor theorem. Let us now look at a few methods of simplifications based on fractions that can be helpful in answering the questions from algebra and other topics like thirds, indices, etc. Generally, when we have two fractions that are in proportion, we can apply different methods of simplification to arrive at the correct answer much faster. So let's consider two fractions that are in proportion and then look at what these different methods are. So let's say there are two fractions a by b and c by b right so these are the two fractions now what does it mean when we say that the two fractions are in proportion basically they are equal right the ratio of a to b is equal to the ratio of c to d all right which has been covered in detail in the uh, video of ratios and proportions so here we have got the concept of proportionality right uh, a is to b is equal to c is to d now let's see what kinds of operations can be performed on these two fractions to arrive at different relationships which can be helpful in answering questions from various topics uh, easily. Let us first try to cross multiply the numerators and denominators. Basically, let us take the numerator of the first fraction to the second uh, denominator of the second fraction and the denominator of the first fraction, uh, second fraction to the numerator of the first fraction. Likewise, let us just interchange the numerator and denominator of the uh, second fraction and first fraction respectively basically a kind of cross multiplication so what do we get when we do that we simply say that d by c will be equal to b by a all right d by c is equal to b by a or you can say that b by a is equal to d by c now what does it look like right a by b the fraction a by b has become b by a and the fraction c by d has become d by c so basically reciprocal of the individual fractions which means if a by b is equal to c by d then we can say that b by a will be equal to d by c this is what we have got here b by a equals to d by c and this operation or this relationship is known as invertendo Right? This is called as invertendo. So while simplifying questions from algebra, we can sometimes apply invertendo and try to simplify the given question much faster. Let us now try a uh, different operation. Right? For example, uh, let us simply uh, take uh, a to the denominator of the second fraction and d to the numerator of the first fraction. So what do we get? We will get uh, d by 
B equals to C by A. B by B equals to C by A. Or we can say A by C equals to B by D. Right? Different ways of looking at it. A by C equals to B by D. What is this operation known as A by C equals to B by D? This is known as alternando. Right? This is alternando. So basically we are alternating their uh, numerators and denominators of the opposite fractions. So this is called alternando. So as you see here from the first equation, the basic equation that is A by B equal to C by D, we have got two new relationships, right? One is called invertendo and the second one is called alternando. So let us now look at the next relationship which can be obtained from equation 1. Let us add 1 on both the sides of the given equation, right? Plus 1 on both the sides, which does not change the equation. So what do we get? A by B plus 1 equals to C by D plus 1. Alright, so we are adding 1 to equation number 1. Now let's simplify this. What do we get? A plus B by B equals to C plus D by D. Basically B is the LCM here. So we get A plus B by D and D is the LCM here. C plus D by D. This is a new relationship that we have obtained, right? So when we say that A by B equals to C by D, we can say we can also conclude that A plus B by D will be equal to C plus D by D. So basically the denominators get added to the numerators, right? And we say that A plus B by B equals to C plus D by D. And this operation is known as componendo. I'm sure all of you have heard about this relationship componendo. Let us now uh, go for another relationship. Let us subtract 1 from equation number 1, right, on both the sides. So what do we get? A by B minus 1 equals to C by D minus 1. And then simplifying further, what do we get? A minus B by B equals to C minus D by D. And this is the new relationship which is known as dividendo. Right? So we can say A minus B by B equals to C minus D by D. So basically here we are subtracting the denominators from the numerators and we get this relationship called dividend. How do we obtain this? Just subtract one on both the sides. So when we are actually simplifying the questions, we need not add one or uh, subtract one on both the sides. We can simply remember these identities called component with dividend to and go ahead and perform the operation there. Now we have one last uh, relationship here which is obtained by combining both componendo and dividendo. Alright, we have already got two uh, different relationships here, componendo and dividendo. Now let's find out the next one which is a combination of componendo and dividendo. What do we do here? Divide these two equations. Let's say this is equation number 2, right? And here we have equation 3. So let's take equation number 2 by equation number 3. So what do we get? We can say a plus b by b whole divided by a minus b by b equals to c plus d by d divided by c minus d by d. Alright. Now this when simplified further what happens b and b anyway gets cancelled b and d also gets cancelled here. So what are we left with? a plus b by a minus b equals to c plus d by c minus d. And this relationship is known as componendo dividendo. Alright. Now, while solving various questions, you may uh, apply any of these relationships invertendo, alternendo, componendo, dividendo, or componendo and dividendo to see if you can get the answer really quick and in a much simpler manner.